Hi, my name's Rich Astley. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Choreograph. I'm very happy uh, today to be sitting down with Rukmini from Microsoft Advertising. Great to have you here with us. Thank you. Um, perhaps you can just start off with telling us a little, about, a little bit about you and your role. Um, so I run all of, um, so I'm Rukmini Iyer and I run all of uh, advertising engineering uh, and product. Uh, I've been at Microsoft for 13 plus years, most of it in advertising. And prior to that, I was in Yahoo Advertising, and so, you know, it's been, I love the space, so uh, it's been a fun journey. And can you maybe tell us a little bit about your week here at Cannes? How's it been? Um, I, I, this is my first time at Cannes, and so I had no idea what to expect, but I really feel like I'm among people who love all the things I like to do. Uh, and advertising is a, you know, deeply technical space, and I think I had a 20-minute conversation with somebody on measurement uh, yesterday. And I don't think I would have had it at any other technical conferences. <laughs> so this has been a really fun week for me here. That's great to hear. Uh, yeah. uh, obviously, lots of interesting discussions this week. Uh, lots of headlines, lots of announcements. Huge amount of discussion, obviously, of course, about AI. Yeah. Of course, about a sort of post-cookie world. Yeah. Um, perhaps you could just tell us a little bit about what Microsoft Advertising is doing, specifically around kind of ad tech and how you're building for the future. Um, so. Microsoft has been, you know, deeply involved in AI for, e even though it's more prominent right now in the last two or three years, Satya himself has been deeply involved in AI for the last eight plus years. Uh, and he's been pretty instrumental in bringing together all the AI components across Microsoft. So ad tech was always a front and center for him. And so ad tech, Microsoft research, Azure AI, so all of these pieces, he's been bringing them together for a while. And I think the fact that he did all this legwork really set us up well when the breakthroughs happened with GPT-4 and large language models. Uh, and we were right, you know, at the right time to take advantage of it. Um, so for ad tech, LLMs have been, you know, we, we started working with LLMs before even GPT-4 made it to Azure. Uh, and so we've had some head start in the space. And at the conference, I felt like, you know, um, a lot of headway has been made in terms of how to use LLMs for creativity, for productivity. And so all of the things you're hearing, you're doing, uh, are the things that you know, we are also working towards uh, enabling. So AI, that's AI. And then if you look at what's happening with cookies and you know, how do we take that forward, again, we've been very privacy first. Microsoft has run enterprise for a long time. And so privacy has been, you know, it's almost like in our DNA. And so for us, the cookie deprecation, again, is not just about how do we do better post-cookie, it's about how do our partners do better post-cookie. And so if you look at our whole strategy for post-cookie, uh, it involves you know, us thinking about how to enable our partners to do well. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's been a lot of discussion about how AI can help enable creativity and ideas. Obviously, we're here in, in Cannes. Um, but I think there's, there's an interesting angle here also for efficiency. Yes. How do you think AI can help drive more efficient delivery of advertising and optimization of advertising? Um, I'd say it can drive efficiency in the back end processes. For instance, we use it for uh, labeling, you know, like lab just getting label data, editorial, um, you know, figuring out scam, spam, advertising, you know, fraud. So it helps all the way in the back end processes to all the way in the front end processes where you know people are trying to create things and how do you create workflows for them so that the entire you know experience of creating an ad is more seamless. Um, so I, I'd say we are trying it everywhere in sales processes, uh, in back end you know human processes like what used to be human is now human plus uh, language models. Uh, and then in the creative process. And I, I'd say we will have to do a few iterations to get this right, but I'm going to assume that it's gonna really free up our time to then scale up our, mm. you know, our whole processes, you know, our labeling processes as an example. We can collect a lot more very high quality labels using language models combined with human auditors. And so I'd say this, we're gonna see this repeat over and over again. Yeah, I think yeah. that's an interesting trend I'm, I'm seeing as well is this idea of um, AI being informed by humans yes. as opposed to AI, AI making the decisions yes, for humans. Yes, exactly. And I think, yeah. that's, I think that's a really interesting space. Um, 
I think, you know, the other thing is I'd love to talk a little bit about, yeah. if it's okay with you, is, is our relationship. Yes. Um, so we've uh, we started a journey together. Yeah. Um, our teams have been now working together and I think some really interesting opportunities yes. starting to, to come through. Um, perhaps you could talk about some of the work that, you know, you think we can do together and, and yeah. some of the things yeah. we've got uh, in our partnership together. Yeah. I, I, I mean, we've had a long-running partnership with you and it's, I think, been a very trusted partnership. Um, I, I think this AI generation, as it, you know, as we build this into our processes, scale is the next challenge that we will deal with. Like, you know, if you could create a hundred great campaigns, now you should be able to create a million or even larger than that great campaigns. Uh, and so my, um, you know, my North Star vision is when you could do previously great marketing for a cohort of users or a targeted segment of users. But if I can now enable you to do marketing for every single user, every person you met, you could sell that brand to the way you would contextually sell to that user. Uh, to me, how do I help you scale up? Uh, I think that's where I would love to see our partnership go next. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure uh, you will be you know, thought forward. You'll be looking at how to build AI into your creative approval processes, into your creative asset generation processes. But then the next step of, you know, how do we scale it up and then personalize it to every user at the right time? That, I think, is, has to be a close collaboration between Microsoft and uh, you. And I think this is where I'm hoping yeah. the next two or three years as you work together. Uh, absolutely. And I think also, of course, is, is our advertisers. Yes. Um, and, you know, we obviously want to help our advertisers yeah. um, get closer to your users yes. and yes. your customers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there's obviously data is critical to that. Yes. Right. And managing data in a secure, scalable way. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I know we're talking closely about uh, data collaboration and yes. more specifically data clean rooms yes. as well. Yes, yes. What do you think the role of data clean rooms is for the future for, for Microsoft advertising? Um, you know, we were very conservative about data. So even when the clean room conversations originally started, we were, you know, we were like, okay, let's think about this a hundred times before we take a step forward. Uh, but I do think that the data clean rooms enable all the players in the ecosystem to participate without losing, you know, what's core to them. So for the advertisers, they have core first party data and they don't want that data to just be you know, leaked. And so, and similarly us, like we have core consumer first party data and we don't want that data just you know, going ev everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I think the clean rooms do give us an opportunity to collaborate in a, in a safe way without losing the essence of what we know about our customers and our users. Which is, you know, for us equally important, yes. um, you know, we, we work closely with our advertisers and clients yeah. and in many instances they have you know secure data relationships yeah. with their yeah. customers as well yeah. so finding ways that we can bring yes. our advertisers data together with with your users yeah. in a way that respects the privacy of, yes. of, of customers I think is, is going to be really really important for the yeah. future yeah. Um, so we obviously have to <laughs> talk a bit a little, little bit more about uh, AI specifically yeah um, Obviously, there's there's also concern, mm -hmm. and you know the the thought of some risk around what AI could do in yeah. the industry, um, and lots of discussion as well around the ethics and sort of transparency right. of AI. Right. You know, we right. hear a lot about this concept of hallucinations yeah. and AI um, throwing out uh, strange you know data and observations. Um, you know, what's what's your thought? Obviously, you've been a pioneer in this area yeah, uh, in yeah. terms of embracing AI within the business. You know, how do you think we need to be considering AI and the sort of ethics and transparency behind it? So, so I mean, because we were a pioneer, we also had you know some pitfalls that we had to go through. You know, because um, we actually the very first release of Copilot was in Bing Chat, when the when we released that, we we thought we had actually taken care of the guardrails and the hallucinations, but then we realized that uh, people could still redirect the AI into spots, like completely weird spots, where it will say, I love you, and you know, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, and so we had to, uh, we, we have been working incessantly on making sure that you know, responsible AI, we have a digital safety board, uh, and so all of the technology we're building in ad tech is built on top of both REI and right 
well, you know, what DSP allows and every AI application goes through the safety board inside Microsoft. And so we are very aware that being a pioneer also comes with some risks and how do we mitigate those risks. Um, the other thing I do see is that with AI, you will also see a lot of fraud and scam. And in fact, that'll be, those will be the first players that leverage uh, AI and we are seeing some of that. And so, you know, we are, com we are coming up with our own solutions to how to combat um, fake ads, uh, you know, using celebrity faces. You know, our editorial systems are changing like crazy in the back end trying to catch up to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the whole deep fake deep, issue deep, exactly. is, a, is a yeah. major concern yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and how much of what you're doing in this space is sort of, I suppose, experimental, yeah. you know, versus embedded at the moment. I mean, so much of AI is, ha is happening at an incredible pace at the it's moment. Yeah, exactly. How are you managing that sort of experimentation versus scale? So a lot of times, it, it, in fact, sometimes I have to be thankful that people are trying these things because, you know, it also gives you a view into how things will get used. And so a lot of things are in production for editorial, for instance, like, you know, um, we're looking at how to look at image the editorial with images very carefully. Um, videos will be even harder. Uh, and so some of this is in production and some of this is, you know, constantly being experimented on in terms of, okay, uh, this is a scenario we haven't considered. Mm -hmm. The interesting angle is the LLMs themselves can be used as regulators too. And so, you know, you can develop the LLMs to watch out for so, so it's very interesting sort of yeah, to AI combating, combating AI, AI. <laughs> yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so I think the, you can leverage the power of LLMs to also mitigate many of these issues. Uh, and so that it's some of it is in production, some of it is experimental, yeah. and we're being very agile in terms of catching these issues. Like, we, we, and luckily for us, our consumers report them, uh, our internal testers report them, and so you know we are able to find find things and deal with them appropriately. It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. 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 Um, so obviously AI is really changing yeah. data science, yes. modeling. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly our data scientists within, within my organization, yeah. you know, it's, it's a fascinating time where we're looking at kind of new ways of modeling yeah. data. Um, how are you seeing that now sort of play out in the world of, of advertising in terms of, you know, new models, new ways of, you know, creating segmentation, these yes. sorts of things. Yeah, but for, I mean, the direction we have gone towards is um, using LLMs. LLMs actually, they are expensive to use right now and I'm pretty sure the cost will come down. Um, but we use looking at LLMs and saying, hey, can you give me a good understanding of this user given this is the data that I have on this user? And it's very interesting. We are seeing it come up with very good both short-term and long-term interest profiles. Uh, and so once you do that, you know, I'm no longer at a segmentation or a cohort level. I can actually go at an individual user level to personalize the ad or personalize the content for that user. Um, and so we are headed in a direction of extreme scale or mm -hmm. what we're calling hyper-personalization, uh, where we can use LLMs to really teach us more about what the, you know, what the user would care about, what they would love to see both in the discovery mode as well as in the retargeting mode. Mm. Um, and so once we go in that direction, then scale is the, you're trying to work with scale. And so then inference optimization, uh, distilled models, like, you know, how do you take uh, L the very large models to kind of give you lots of training data and then distill them into a smaller model that can run faster. Mm. Uh, because users are also, you know, if you have five activities today, then I want to up update your event profile because you, you know, you've done something new and you're probably interested in something slightly different. And so you want to capture that nuance. And so this is where we are headed, hyperscale, hyperpersonalization, and then how do you manage the costs? So inference optimization and distilled models. Um, my, a lot of my data scientists are like, are we now becoming prompt engineers? And I'm like, no, <laughs> you don't have, the really, prompt engineering is obviously, you know, very helpful and you can actually do really cool things with prompt engineering. But it's really the scale of the problem is now just exploded. And so you're not limited by scale anymore. And so I, that's the way I want the data scientists to think. Yeah, yeah. and, and you, you mentioned a really good point, which is, you know, with, with this, Hyper personalization. Yeah. There's, there's there's a cost factor. Yes. You know, we're, we're processing more and more, more and more data. Data exactly. And, you know, I think that's something we have to think about too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and with, with that, I actually would love to just get your point of view on yeah. this concept of hyper-personalization. Yeah, you know, yeah. we, we, we look at this a lot, you know, where is, where's the right line? Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. if, if I'm um, in an application or on the open web, um, you know, obviously you want things to be tailored and relevant. Yes. Um, but there's a limit where things start to get almost sort of intrusive or spooky, as yeah, some yeah. people might say. Where, where do you where do you think the right line is? And you know, because AI is really pushing the limits of, of yeah. personalization. Um, I I to some extent I will tell you that the consumers will tell us where the line is, um, mm. and our role is to really make when AI is really or ads are really hyper personalized and highly relevant. That's not really an ad. It's just great content, content. in front of the yeah. user. And this is like our north star for us. Like you know. When I started in advertising 15 years ago, they used to tell me, oh, you are the set of blue links that show up before I get to my organic search links. <laughs> and I want to be at a place where people are like, oh, you are the great set of links that show up before the boring set of links, you know? And so I, I think advertisers have a, an ability now, and especially as we scale, to have this one-on-one -on -one conversation with the users. It's our job to make it less creepy and more about this conversation. And I think if we do it well, then I think in two years we can make it interactive. We can then have a complete conversation. We can collect information from users where they say, hey, you gave me this car. I was just talking to somebody and they said, I love this car, but it doesn't have a sunglass holder. How do you collect this information <laughs> back from your uh, user who's already purchased your product? But then, then the next iteration of your product comes out. If there are thousands such users who are all like missing that sunglass, how do you get this information back? Mm. Uh, so I think this hyper-personalization leads you to have this one-on-one -on -one conversation. And that means your creatives can get interactive. Your creatives can be sequential. I think this opens up a full uh, ability for advertisers to do so much more with their users mm. than what they had before. You're right, we have to wa watch that line between when does it get creepy. Mm. Uh, but I, I would say I would love to be at a place where people say, I want to see the ads first. Yeah. yeah. I, I, th I think it's, it's a super interesting point that yeah. advertising when it's done well yeah. can feel like content. Exactly. You know, yeah. it, it can be, okay, this is interesting. And yeah. if it's done, really well, yeah. it can become a conversation. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's super exciting. So uh, Rukmini, I have to ask the, uh, obviously the final question, which yeah. is always going to be about the future. Yeah. Um, we'd love to hear from you about uh, what are the things that you're really excited about over the next few years? Uh, so immediately, I think for us, this hyper-personalization, making it more real, and as you say, scale will be a big component of it, because if the North Star vision is to have this one-on-one -on -one conversation with every user, then your, your systems need to scale to handle this, this hyper-personalized conversation. So that, I think, for us is immediate. Uh, and you know, I work very closely with my sales partners. They love the story, and they're like, execute, execute, like give it to me right now. Uh, so that's, I think, something that we are very focused on. I think the next stage for us is cross-channel optimization, because I think the channels are still very separate. And I think we want to bring them together so that if you want to ever have a sequential conversation with your user, you have to then bring the user across all the channels that they're operating the in, the yeah. storytelling yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and so I think cross-channel will be the next, then sequential and interactive ads. And so for me, I feel like, you know, if somebody just locks me up and says, you know, work on this, I can, I am, I can be super busy for the next three years. <laughs> <laughs> it's such an interesting space right now uh, for us. It certainly is. Yeah, yeah. Rumini, thank you so much for joining us. Thank we you really for having me. We really appreciate it yeah. and uh, enjoy the rest of your camp. Thank you.